Hi, I'm Dylan McKay, and this is another exciting episode of Out of the Trenches, where I sit here in the chair of temporary insanity and answer all of your questions about the First World War. Isn't that right, Bren? Yeah, Dylan. Yeah. Ben Johnstone writes, um, Hi Indy and the crew, my question is, my friend's great-grandfather served as a pilot in World War I and he carried around a German gun. Was this just so he could pass as a German pilot if he crashed or more as a war souvenir for after it ended? My friend and I were curious and couldn't figure out why he would carry an uh, enemy gun into battle. Great show, keep up the good work. Well, Unless your friend's great-grandfather spoke perfect German and was wearing a German uniform, the gun would not help him passing himself off as a German pilot. Now, it would be interesting to know what kind of a gun he had. I assume it was a pistol, maybe a Mauser C96 or, or a Luger pistol. Pilots were not usually issued guns, but most of them were allowed to carry a handgun, usually for two reasons. One, if they landed, they could defend themselves, although there was a small chance of getting back to their own lines on, say, the Western Front. But two, to shoot themselves. Now, this might sound like a tall tale, but pilots feared being trapped in a crashed plane with broken bones and unable to escape the burning wreck. Instead of burning to death, they would rather shoot themselves many times. Or just as you suggested, it was a souvenir. Luger pistols were highly valued as souvenirs since their design is, well, it's pretty iconic. Oliver Goodrich writes, Hi, Indy and the gang. My great-grandpa was a sniper in World War I. He was 17, the same age as me, incidentally, which is kind of scary. I know, 17 is a tough age. And from County Wexford, Ireland. I just wanted to ask this. There is a story that has been passed down to me from my mom and her mom, who is the Irish part of my family that one day, when my great-grandpa was out on a mission, he, for whatever reason, had to take cover, so he found shelter in a ruin of a barn, and as he entered, he came across a German soldier of a similar age, and instead of fighting, they turned and ran. I was curious if this was a common thing to happen, and if it had any criminal offense, or if it was just two boys not wanting to harm one another. Love the shows, been watching since day one, and haven't missed an episode yet. All the best, Oliver. Thank you, Oliver. That was a very nice letter. The fact that the barn was still intact and that he was Irish suggests that this happened either at the beginning or during the Hundred Day Offensive when you had fighting in terrain that still resembled villages and farmhouses and hadn't been just blasted flat over the past three, well, nearly four years. Um, your great-grandpa might have met a young German soldier that was maybe lost during the retreat. Just imagine how they must have felt. Two young soldiers who expected that everyone they met out there who is not on their side would be out to kill them. I mean, it was either fight or flight. And they ran. This happens in every army, in every battle, throughout every epoch of history. And yes, though it is common human behavior, it is not often documented or talked openly about because well, it's looked down upon. It's called unmanly. It's called cowardly. Conscripted young men may be as brave as every other soldier, but they're not battle-hardened, experienced killers. Close combat, the fighting man against man, that might be one of the most extreme circumstances a human being can experience. I wouldn't fault them one second for running. Wayne Moyer writes, Where is Galicia and why was it so vital to the early war effort? You seem to mention it every week in the early episodes. Wayne, we thought your question was such an important and such a relevant question that we came here on location to Lviv in the Ukraine, which a hundred years ago was Lemberg, the capital of Galicia within the Austro-Hungarian Empire, to answer your question, didn't we? It's very nice here, by the way. It's pretty and it's a lovely day and it's a really cool city. But anyhow, back to your question. 
what was the importance of Galicia and what was actually happening there and why did I mention it so often at the beginning of the war. Now the Battle of Galicia, which was also known as the Battle of Lemberg, lasted from late August to early September in 1914 and resulted in a Russian victory, which the Russians actually really needed at the time, losing in Tannenberg and the Masurian Lakes far to the north. It was a big blow for Austria-Hungary because Lemberg was one of the main cities of the empire, the largest of the eastern cities of the empire, and was the gateway to the plains that led to the Carpathians, which themselves were the gateway to the Hungarian plains. So this was a major, major Russian victory and a major humiliating defeat for Austria-Hungary. And in terms of casualties, just for the three weeks of the battle, we're talking 650,000 casualties, 400,000 Austro-Hungarian and 250,000 Russian. And when you think that like the Battle of the Somme lasted three and a half months and we talk about all the massive casualties and this was like half the casualties of that in three and a half weeks. So we're looking at, at casualty numbers that you usually associate with the year of battles with Verdun and the Somme and Brusilov which are, of course are numbers you number in the millions, but this is only a three and a half week battle. And Russia, once it had occupied Lemberg, actually maintained the occupation for nine months before Mackensen and the Gorlitsa Tarnov offensive pushed the Russians out of Galicia in general, but of Lemberg in specific. Now we're gonna be talking to a professor in just a few minutes and we're gonna be talking to him about how the local people felt during the Russian occupation, those nine months from September of 1914 until the spring of 1915. And that will be in one of our special episodes and we'll answer that later. So Wayne, there's your answer, okay? Um, next time, ask us a question that we can answer staying in Berlin or in Stockholm, all right? Thank you. If you'd actually like to see the end of the Battle of Galicia, you can click right here to see that episode. Uh, tell all of your little league coaches and your priests, your rabbis, your Buddhist monk friends about our channel because we like them. See you next time.